Today's lesson is all about looking at finding that deeper space within you. So let's see how the lessons that we've covered so far, the bodies that we've covered so far, how do they relate? How do they help us move into this next set of four verses which are all focused around Sonia? Remember that each verse is called a body, and a body means a step. So every step is taking you one step closer, one step higher. So if we look at the previous verse, Guru Nanak Dev Ji talked about, again, reminding us of some of the ways in which people try to obtain spiritual greatness. And the ones who obtain spiritual greatness, they had a certain characteristic they were f- notorious and famous around the world for having achieved certain levels of spiritual state. Guru Nanak Dev Ji talks about the people who are able to lengthen their lifespan. People who are famous. People who have made a good reputation for themselves. People who have a big following where lots of people are praising them. Just Kira Jagle. Guru Nanak Dev Ji says, Jetis and Adarna Ave, Tavatna Pacheke. That if grace doesn't come to those people, then they become Kita under Kit. Insects amongst insects. Dosi Dostari. Punished amongst sinners. And it is the nirgun who receive the gun. Nanak nirgun gun kar. The ones who haven't achieved this spiritual success, the spiritual glory. So Guru Nanak Dev Ji talks about those people. In these verses, he talks about how to actually obtain spiritual greatness. What is the technique to obtain spiritual heights and to what heights you can reach using this technique. So this whole technique, Guru Nanak Dev Ji spends verses 8, 9, 10 and 11 talking about the praises of this particular technique, Sonia. Listening is the technique that Guru Nanak Dev Ji is now focusing on. Sounds like a very simple technique, just to listen. But let's spend a little bit of time before we go into the verse thinking about listening in our own lives. One thing we may not realize is that our mind is constantly having a conversation. All the time our mind is saying something. But if the mind is saying something, if there is a constant talking conversation happening in the mind, then there's also a constant listening happening in the mind. There's also someone listening to that voice. Yeah? If the talking is happening all the time, then there's a listening happening all the time. We listen to our inner voice more than we listen to anything in our life. We identify with that inner voice. That inner voice is what we hold on to, and that becomes our self-identity. Whatever that inner voice says, we think, that's me. That's what I'm thinking. That's what I'm saying. That is the basis of our mind and the ego. When we talk about ego, we're not talking about hankar, like it's pride, like I think I'm better than someone. That's not what we're talking about. Home and hankar are two separate things. Hankar is just pride. That's just to say that I'm better than you. Home is to say I am. Mehaga, I exist. That I exist manifests itself in the voice and the conversation that's happening in our mind all the time. And that voice in our head is constantly reaffirming our ego. 
What do we mean by this? It's always telling us how right we are. You notice the voice in your head is very rarely telling you that you're wrong. It's always on your side. It's always your best friend. It's like a little team, you and the voice. So it's constantly telling you how right you are, and it's reminding you how wrong everybody else is all the time. Why do we get angry at people? Because the voice in our head says that they're wrong. I would never do anything like that. I can't believe they did that to me. Why don't they listen to me? That's what the voice in our in our head is constantly saying. So, when we constantly hear that, what we do is we keep reaffirming this idea that I am and I am okay. I am good. I am right. And we only listen to that which protects the ego. We only hear what we want to hear. We only listen to that which we agree with, to that which doesn't change us. But do we ever think about the one listening to the voice rather than the voice itself? So that's what we're talking about today. Not the voice in our head, but the one listening to the voice in our head. Because if there's a talker, then there is also a listener. Who is the one listening to that voice? The voice in our head is constantly saying, I am, I am good, I am right. And there's a, somebody inside us that agrees with that. That's the one that we're talking about. So we're talking about a very different kind of listening. And in order to learn something new, you have to learn a new way of listening to that message. That's what we're going to be talking about today. You know, if somebody is listening to something, if somebody has got some music on, what are the basic questions that, that get raised in our head? If they have some headphones on, some basic questions that get raised in our head is what are they listening to? Yeah? Anybody who walks past with headphones on, there's a small thought in your head that says, I wonder what they're listening to. Yeah? If you explore that further, you might wonder why they're listening to it. So if somebody is jogging, for example, you might not know what they're listening to, but you might assume that they're listening to maybe something that's fast-paced, some fast music so that it can help them jog, help them do exercise. So when somebody is listening, you will ask a question, what, what are they listening to? Why are they listening to that music? Why are they listening to that sound? And if you're interested, the next question you'll ask is, well, how can I listen to it? How do I obtain it? So if Guru Nanak Dev Ji is talking about Sunya, then we also have to raise these same questions. What should we listen to? Why should we listen to it? And is there a special way of listening to it? How? How should we listen to it? So these are the questions that we're going to explore. And interestingly, we might think that body 8, which is the one that we're looking at today, is the first explanation of Sunya. That this is the first time Guru Nanak Dev Ji goes into detail about listening. But the questions that we've raised of what, why and how have already been covered in the verses that we've been looking so far. Let's start with the how. How should we listen? In the fourth body, Guru Nanak Dev Ji says, Moho ke bolan boliye jit sun tare pyar. So the listening first occurs there. What words can be spoken that when you hear it, I will feel your love? It's a question. A question to the divine. What words can I say from my mouth? Moho ke bolan boliye jit sun. That which you will listen to, 
tare pyar that i will feel your love and the response to that question is amrit vela sach nao vadiyai vichar the response to that question is naam sach nao vichar contemplation and amrit vela early morning and even though we covered amrit vela one of the things that becomes relevant now is that early morning if you notice is the quietest part of the day so guru nanak dev ji says that the solution and the answer to the question moho ke bolan boliye what should i say how shall i say it what words should i use that you will listen to it it's talking to god you will listen to what words can i say that when you listen to it you will shower your love on me the question is answered by saying naam is what you must do vichar is what you must do but you must do it in the silence of the morning so in the response of listening there is a sound element to it amrit vela now let's delve into this question a bit more because we have to look at these things before we can even start anything to do with sonia now does the question sound quite dualistic let's think about it moho ke bolan boliye what words can i say that you can listen to and yet we've spent all of our time trying to break this duality that there is a me and that there is a god yet the question is phrased in such a way what words can i say that when you listen to it i can feel your love there's a there's a duality that seems to be there but we know that there's no duality right we know that this duality thing is our own construct that we have to break that apart so let's take the idea of non duality of ik and answer this question in that way if this question is phrased in such a way that there is a person speaking and a person listening the non dual way of looking at it is to say that the person speaking becomes the listener you become the listener then let's phrase the question what can i say that when i listen to it i will feel love what can i say that when i listen to it i will feel love or the other non dual way of what words will you say that when you listen to it your love will shine yeah we have to say it in a non dual way so if you remove god as someone external then within you becomes the god the one listening to the amrit naam amrit vela sach nao the one listening to that becomes your inner god now this might start sound like we're getting far too complicated but remember these are pauris these are steps it has to become more complicated otherwise we're going to be staying at the lower steps we have to go higher and deeper and deeper and this is a very very deep concept and guru nanak dev ji has started hinting already what we need to be thinking about before we attempt to th- try and understand this sonia so we are answering the question how do i listen the how is answered by taking duality away and says that you have to do the mantra and you have to be the listener yeah now we understand that what we're talking about is an internal listening a deep conscious listening so what we're talking about is something beyond the superficial listening of the mind and we use amrit vela we use outside silence to find our inner silence yeah amrit vela it has to be done at the time where the world is quiet and we use that quiet to find our quiet to listen to our own silence that's the how the why 
is answered in Pauri 5. Gaviye suniye man rakhiye pao dukh parhar sukh kar le jaye. Sing, listen. Gaviye suniye man rakhiye pao. Sing, listen, keep love within the mind. Discard suffering. Dukh parhar, push suffering away. Sukh kar le jai. Bring pleasure, peace, happiness into your home. So the why is very clear. When we follow this technique, suffering will go and peace will return home. Notice the word kar here. It's not saying bring peace to you. It says <coughs> return peace back to your home. Dukh parhar sukh kar le jai. Bring that back to you, back to your home. The sukh belongs home. That means that within you, you are the home of peace. We all think that life is difficult, life is suffering. But Guru Nanak Dev Ji is saying that actually suffering is something that you've brought into you. Sukh is something that belongs to you. You are the home of peace. Suffering, Dukh, is a byproduct of our unconscious living. It's the consequence of us not living within our home. So we've covered the how do we listen. We listen by us being the listener to ourselves. The why is because that will remove suffering and bring pleasure back home. Now the question what? Guruji spends four bodies telling you to listen. But within these bodies he doesn't say what you're supposed to listen to. What are we listening to? But he's already answered that. In Pauri number five, after Dukh Parhar Sukh Kar Le Jai, Guruji has says, Gurmukh Nadang. Listen to the Guru's instruction and you will find Nad, that presence, that vibration within you. And listen to the Guru's instruction and he will explain what that Nad is. He will give you the understanding of that Nad. Gurmukh Nadang, Gurmukh Vedang. He won't just leave you with this Nad, he will explain it to you. He'll give you Gyan, Ved, knowledge. Gurmukh Vedang. And Gurmukh, through the Guru's instruction, you will learn that what this Nad is, is the same Nad. That is Rahaya Samaye. That is in you and in everything. It goes back to the Ik. So Guru has already told us what to listen to. When we go within ourselves, what are we listening to? We're listening to the presence of our own self. We're listening to our aliveness, our Nad. Gurmukh Nadang. The Guru is showing us Nad. But how do we know this Nad? Because we're listening to the Guru. The Guru is showing us this Nad. So when you go into yourself, what you listen to is not actually that important. It's where it takes you. It takes you back into yourself. Getting complicated? Yeah? But hopefully, slowly, slow, slowly, we'll start unraveling what we're talking about here. But just to keep it relatively simple, we're talking about three things. Listening. How do we listen? We have to listen within ourselves. Why do we listen? To get rid of suffering. What are we listening to? We're listening to the nad of our own self. Our nad. What do we mean by Nad? That when the mind stops talking for a moment, 
The thing that is listening to the mind, that's what we're finding. The one that is listening to the mind, that is what our meditation is getting us to. This is why when we do mantar jab, it's very important. Right at the beginning, we say, don't let your mind go somewhere else and your mantar go somewhere else. Bring them in sync. The mind has to be reciting that. <clears throat> then what do we say? Drop expectations of the mind. Because even if the mind is saying what the words are saying, the mind is still hoping for something. There's still some desire somewhere. Drop those. Just listen. Just be present in what you're saying. Complete and utter awareness of just the mantra as it's coming out of your mouth, going into your ears. Just be present in that mantra. Then you drop the one who is sitting there still saying, I hope something happens. You drop the person doing the mantra job and just sit within presence. Because even if you drop the mind, if you drop the ego, you're not into a void. There's still something there. There's still a someone there. There's still a man, little me, waving in the background saying, I'm still here. That I am is the one that what we're going to focus on in Sunya. That is your nad. The I am that doesn't belong to you, but it's just there. The light bulb in the house is aware of its own light. Yeah? Going back to that bricks and fortress analogy that we started all those weeks ago. The light becomes aware of its own light. Not what it's shining on, not what it's thinking about, not what it's talking about, not what it holds on to, but just that the fact that it is on. This is why Guru Nanak Dev Ji says that ego is the problem, but ego is also the solution. It is a chronic disease, but the solution, the medicine is Daru B Ismai. The medicine is also there. Because we're not getting rid of the ego and left with nothing. We dropped the thing that says, I am, that this is me. That's all we're dropping. But there is something there that can't be dropped. That can't be denied. The aliveness is there. The association with the aliveness is what we're dropping. The mind saying, you know that little bit of jyot inside you? That's me. That's my soul. That's I am. That's not you. That's Paramatma. Yeah? So the what we're listening to is something very critical here. And what will be the benefit of doing all of this hard work? Body number six, Mat, which Ratan Jawahar Manik J Ik Gurki Sik Suni. If you listen to this instruction, if you listen to this Gurki Sik, the Guru's teaching, everything turns into diamonds and jewels and rubies. But you have to do this. You cannot ignore this, otherwise, you get stuck stuck at this body. You will never begin body number eight. We've understood everything so far, but if we don't do this, if we don't, within our meditation, focus on the one doing the meditation, not what we're saying. This is why Guru Granth Sahib Ji has thousands of different mantras. Tuhi, Tuhi, Har, Har, Vahe Guru, Vaho, Vaho. Bani isn't focused on which particular mantra. It's focused on where that mantra is going to take you. Gurmukh Nadan. This is why Japji Sahib is so complicated. We think Japji Sahib is the introduction to Guru Granth Sahib Ji. It's not. Japji Sahib is the root on what the whole Guru Granth Sahib is standing on. If Guru Granth Sahib Ji is a tree, it's standing on the root of Japji Sahib. That's why Japji Sahib is where all the deep information is. Then you spend the rest of Guru Granth Sahib Ji trying to understand what Japji Sahib is trying to say. That's why it's deep. Don't be afraid of it. It is deep. Yeah? They say, as tall as a tree is, that's how tall the roots are underground. What you see with a tree is only half the tree. 
the other half that you don't see is just as big. Imagine such big trees in the world. That's only half the tree. The other half is what you don't see underground. That's what Japji Sahib is. There are so many layers to Japji Sahib. So many depths of what it's saying. Yeah? Don't think that this is the deepest that Japji Sahib goes. This is, this is not the deepest. So, Matvich Ratan Jawahar Manik J Ik Gurki Sik Suni. If we listen to this, this is the outcome. Now we're ready to start Suni Yan. So the body starts Sonia Sid Pir Sur Nath. A quick note about pronunciation of the word Sonia. Firstly, there is Anana. A lot of people say Sunia, Nanna. They say it with a Nanna. But this is not Nanna, this is Anana. Sonia, Anna. It's got that sound. Difficult for people who are not brought up with Punjabi because that sound is not common in other languages. Yeah? Anana, Adara. Yeah? These kind of rolling of the tongue sounds. So it's not Sunia. It's Anana, Sonia. Secondly, it's a Sihari, not a Bihari. Some people say Suniya with the Bihari. They elongate the E sound. Suniya. This is a very short E sound. Suniya. Very short. Finally, it's got Dulam, not a Lam, which is the two lines, the last vowel on top of the Erda. Suniya, not Suniya. Slight difference, yeah? Not sunie, sunie. It's got an a sound to it. So that's a little bit about pronunciation. Sunie, Sid Pir Surna. This Sihari within the word sunie makes the word a present tense, listening now. By listening now, by being in a state of listening. If the word had a Bihari, Suniya, with a long E sound, it's a future tense word. Gaviya Suniya, do this, go away and do this. Yeah? Guruji is saying, Gaviya Suniya Man Rakhiya Pao. That's a future tense word, go and do this. This is, now we're doing it, we're in it. Suniya, Sid Pir Surunat. So the word Sid, Sid is a word meaning miracle performers, Siddhya. We hear Riddhya Siddhya, people who could do miracles. Yeah? And Sid is plural, doesn't have an onkar underneath it. So miracle performers. Peer is a Persian word, Islamic word, meaning some sort of spiritual master. It's the closest word, I suppose, to Guru within that sort of Persian sort of language, Peer. But here again, Peer is plural, doesn't have an onkar underneath it. So it means spiritual masters. Sur, again, plural, and it means Devte, demigods, Devi Devte. Naat. Plural again. Nath is yogic masters. Those who've taken yoga to a level where they've become a master of that yoga. Guruji is saying, Sonia Sid Pir Surunath. By listening, one reaches the level of Sid, of miracle workers, of Pir spiritual masters of Devi Devte and Yogic Masters. You become at the higher spiritual level if you master this Sonia technique. This is the state that they also obtain. They can obtain this level of Sonia. That's where they get to. That's what makes them a Sid, a Peer, a Sur, a Nath. That's what makes them that level. 
not just what they wear on the outside or what they show to other people. It's the level that they are able to get to because they're able to focus at that level, be aware at that level of their own nad. That makes them that spiritual master. Simple question. Is this really possible? I always like to bring it back to us normal people. Yeah? Nanak nirgun gun kare. We are the nirgun. Yeah? The simple common folk. Do we honestly believe that we can reach this level? Guru Nanak Dev Ji is saying yes. But let's talk about us. Is it possible to obtain this level simply by doing the kind of listening that we do? We go to the Gurdwara, we listen to Keith and listen to Paat. Can we obtain this level? And Guru Nanak Dev Ji isn't, this is not some one-off claim that Guru Nanak Dev Ji is making. Guru Ji makes this claim time and time again. Yeah? Beginning of Asadiwar, you've heard me quote this line before. Balhari Gur Apne Deohari Sadwar. I'm a sacrifice to that Guru hundreds and thousands of times a day. Jin Manaste Devte Kiye. Karatna Lagivar. Who can turn mankind into Devtas in an instant? So Guruji is not just saying this once. This message comes again and again. That you and me and ordinary people can be elevated to the state of a Devi Devta. Do we honestly believe this is possible? Because if you don't believe it, you're not going to do it. You're not going to practice it. You're not going to try. Yeah? Remember, we can try as hard as we want. Yeah? This karam, kirpa, grace, this idea we've covered so much time and time again. Yeah? We have to try, right? We have to do a little bit of effort. So, with the kind of listening that we do, listening to part, listening to Kirtan, is that enough? Is that the kind of listening that we are talking about here? If you just go to the Gurdwara every day and listen to the part, is that Sunya Siddh Peer Surnath? Because you might believe it is. Just go to the Gurdwara and listen to a bit of Kirtan. But listening to Kirtan is at a superficial level. The Kirtan has to go in to the point at which the one doing the listening is the one that's shining. Not what it's listening to, but the one doing the listening starts becoming overflowing. Because what are we focusing on? Gurmukh Nadang. We're trying to find the nad. Yeah? We're trying to find our aliveness. So we have to kind of dissect a little bit what kind of listening do we do? What are the levels of listening that we experience on every day? So for me, there are four stages of listening. At the very basic level, there's hearing. Yeah? What we do with our ears. You hear a sound. You hear a noise. Yeah? Phone might be ringing in the distance. You hear it, but it doesn't register anything. So, the second level is that where the sound actually makes some impact on your brain. Your brain actually does something with that information. What is sound? Sound is information, right? Light is information traveling into our body. Touch, things that we feel, that's information. But within our brain, something has to process that information. The brain has to say, that's useful sound. Like if it's a phone ringing and we're not at home, it's somebody else's home, it's not a useful sound to us. The brain does, just chooses, yeah? Think about the brain like receiving all this information, saying, yeah, I need that, I don't need that. Let's say it's like you hear a crash outside. Your brain says, oh, I might need that. Yeah, that might be useful to you. What is that? Or a car alarm goes off. Your brain says, is that my car alarm? Your brain processes all the sounds and says yes or no. So that's the second level of listening. Where we're listening and we're understanding what we're hearing. First, we're just bringing sound into our ears. Secondly, the brain is actually processing that information. So we can call the first one 
hearing, and maybe the second one is listening. Yeah, we're actually paying attention. Then I think that there are more levels of listening, which is that we can start sensing. With our body, we can start feeling. So if somebody is talking to us, you can just listen to what they're saying, like me, blah, blah, blah. He's just talking, talking, talking. But if somebody's saying something really important to you, or they're really pouring their heart out to you, you will listen, you will process, and you will start absorbing that emotion to the point at which you can start feeling the emotion that they're feeling. So you, then you, so you start listening with your ears, level one. Your brain processes, that's the next level. The third level is your body starts feeling, sensing that sound. It happens with music quite a lot as well. That the brain manifests that sound, not into that's just a very nice song, but it manifests that into emotion. So the emotion coming from the singer, from the music, becomes something that you feel. You start sensing that. So that's, I think, level three of listening. Listening with our body. Yeah? That requires you to really listen intently. You can't be listening to anything else if, you're, if you want to start actually feeling that emotion. The fourth, I think, is awareness. We listen with awareness. That is the step beyond the mind where we're not processing what we're listening to. We're just aware of the listening itself. So the first three levels require sound coming in, us processing, us doing something with it. It's focusing on the sound and the content of the sound. The fourth level is focusing on the one doing the listening. We never really focus on that, right? Any noise that comes in, any sound that comes in, we do the first three levels. We listen with our ears, we process with our brain, we might feel the emotion, but we never take the sound out and actually just listen to the one doing the listening. That's where you're going in. Yeah, we've talked about, we've we've mentioned this time and time again about this being an inner journey. Now's the time to start going in. Yeah? And it is at this level that I think Guru is trying to get us at. This is the level of Sonia Siddhapir Surnath, where the one doing the listening is more important than what it is listening to. 